In this video, we'll learn about prefabs, script events, and spawn management. So now that our player can move, let's take a look at our enemies that we've set up for you. I'm going to drag in an enemy prefab from the asset browser, and I'll double click on the enemy to expand it. You can see here that there's a couple of things already set up. We have a ray gun, a fire point, we have the enemy alien, and then the overall enemy entity. So you can see that we have things like our actors, our materials, anim graphs, rigid bodies, and script canvases set up. If I open up this enemy script canvas, you can see we have a couple of different nodes already in here. To break it down, so on graph start, we run the animation for the actual enemy. In addition, we have a bunch of logic for spawning missiles and creating effects whenever our enemies get hit. Taking a look at our spawning missiles, we create a random number. We apply it as a delay of time and seconds. We create a spawn ticket using our missile prefab, which we'll take a look at as well. With our ticket, we get the translation of our actual fire point entity underneath our enemy alien. We use the spawn ticket to spawn our missile. We take that missile, get its world translation in relation to that fire point. And then we set the world translation so that the missile fires from that fire point. In addition, with our hit effects, you can see that we have an on trigger event here, where essentially when the enemy gets hit, it will destroy the game entity and any of the other entities that are attached to it. It will create a material effect. And then after a certain amount of time, there will be a little kind of explosion effect that pops up which will then destroy the game entity as well. And then over time, it will create this emissive effect on the actual material that we have. Now, if we take a look at our missile prefab, we'll close the prefab editor on our enemy. Overall, the missile prefab is very simple. We have a script canvas, a mesh, materials, and a physics rigid body and collider. And in the missile, all the script canvas does is when the missile is spawned, it will apply a linear velocity to move down vertically through our scene. The last thing we'll take a look at is the enemy itself has a movement script. So in our script canvas, you can see that the enemy is constantly trying to keep track of the player. When our game starts, it will initiate a fly attack. And so it'll set a timer and start that timer. Whenever set attacking is triggered, it will then start a delay, get the current position of our player, and then move our enemy from its current position to where the player is using this lerp between. And then when the lerp is complete, the enemy will destroy itself and remove itself from the game. In addition, our enemies have a delay for moving back and forth through the different rows that they're in. So it will get its local position. And then if row move is triggered, then it will move itself in the X direction back and forth using the plus and minus, and then set that position accordingly. In addition, there is a bit of a delay in the actual movement. So if our row move is triggered, then it will move our enemy in the Y position. Otherwise, if it's not triggered, then it will move itself in the X position. In addition, we have a little bit of delay when our enemies move back and forth. So if row move is currently true, then it'll set a time delay, set row move to false, and move our enemy in the Y position. Otherwise, if our row move is currently false, It'll set it to true and then move the enemy in the Y position. There are also a couple of script events that we'll take a look at that are referenced in our enemy or that we've set up. In our first script event, we've set up an enemy count, a category script event. The tooltip is just enemy count. It has no address type. For the name of the event, we have number of enemies and we have a parameter called enemies count, which is a number so that we can keep track of the number of enemies that are being spawned. Up next, we have the spawn enemy script event. So all we're doing is tracking when enemies are spawned. And then finally, we have our start enemy script event. So this will tell our spawner 
to start the enemies when they actually spawn. So let's get started making our spawner. So in the entity outliner, I'm going to create a new entity and I will just rename it spawner. Now with the actual spawner, I'm going to change its position. So it'll be somewhere in the top left of the environment. So it knows where to start spawning our enemies. All we're going to do is add a script canvas component. And we'll make a script canvas so that we can start spawning our enemies. We'll create a new script. So I'll name it something simple like spawner. Now, to get our spawner started, first I'm going to create an on entity activated node. This will be connected to two nodes. First, a multiply node. And then we'll create a spawn enemy event. So when we receive a spawn enemy event, we will then begin spawning our enemies. For our multiply node, we'll use this to track how many enemies we should spawn. So first, I'm going to create two number variables. One for rows and another for columns. So for now, I'll set this inside of script canvas. We'll have two rows and seven columns of enemies. If you want to edit these variables from O3DE, you can select from component and it'll show up in the editor. I'm going to drag the columns variable to value zero. And then with our changed values, I'm going to drag rows into number one. Now, using our enemy count script event, we can send the number of enemies that we're going to be spawning. So we'll save that result into enemies count. And then we're going to send a spawn enemy event. So when we figure out how many enemies we should spawn, we'll spawn those enemies and send the event to start actually spawning them. Now, from spawn enemy, we're going to create a spawn ticket node. When spawn enemy executes, we'll start creating tickets. We're going to need a variable for our enemy prefab. So under create variable, you can type spawnable script asset ref. We'll name this enemy prefab. And for the actual variable, you can click on the asset area where the folder is, and then you can select the enemy prefab from the dropdown. So now we have a reference to our enemy prefabs and we'll drag that into the prefab slot. Now we'll need a spawn ticket variable. So if I type in ticket, we have that entity spawn ticket. I'll name this something like enemy ticket just to keep track of it. And then the resulting spawn ticket will be our enemy ticket so that we can save it. Now we'll create a repeater node so that we can keep track of how often we spawn the enemies. Instead of ticks for units, we'll use seconds. And we'll use our columns for the number of repetitions. From there, we'll create an add node. This will connect to on start and action. And this will be how we figure out the position of where we spawn our enemies. So I'm going to create a new variable for a number. We'll name this x position. So we'll keep track of the current position of where we're spawning. And then we'll create another number variable for call spacing. So we know how far we should space our actual spawn locations. And I will set this to 10. X position will be value zero. And call spacing will be 10. And then the result will be our new X position to spawn at. Now we'll make a vector three from values node to keep track of that translation. Our X will be set to our new X position. And I'll create another variable for our Y position. So we'll start keeping track of that when we spawn the new row. And then the result of that will lead to a spawn node. So that vector three will be the translation of where we spawn our enemies. We'll use our enemy ticket to actually keep track of our enemies to spawn. Now for our additional rows, I'm going to make an equal to node. So when our repeater completes, we'll start a new sequence of spawning. Value A will be our rows, and then we'll keep track of the current row count. And by default, we'll set it to one, and that'll be value B. So we'll spawn the first row, and then we'll increase row count by one. And then once rows and row count is equal, we'll stop spawning. Next, I'll make a subtract node. So until we've hit our rows limit, we'll adjust the position of our enemies. We'll use that Y position for num zero. 
And then I'll create another variable for row spacing. And we'll set that to 10 as well. So then we'll move our enemies down by 10 so that they can spawn. And then we'll take our Y position for the resulting new position that we'll spawn at. In addition, we'll make sure to reset our X position back to zero so that we start back on the left side. And then we'll make an add node to add to our row count one so that we increase by one every time. We'll make sure to save the new row count and then we'll start spawning all over again. So now we can keep track of the current number of enemies spawned in our current rows. And then when we finally complete spawning all of our enemies, then we no longer have to spawn anymore. So I'll make sure to save this. Back in the editor, I'm going to assign the source for my script canvas to that new spawner script canvas I made. So now if we press play, we can test out our new spawning and you can see our enemies spawned a little strangely, but otherwise it works pretty well.